morning, church, and welcome to Sunday, the 15th of November. It's so good to have you here with us. Cecilia, it's nice to see yes, you this morning. It is. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to be here at 210 Nicholson Street, Footscray. And I'm really looking forward to being able to hear, be here together with the rest of you. Looking forward to that. And stay tuned for those kind of announcements. And we're getting ready to join our worship team as we praise the Lord this morning. But Cecilia, you have a scripture you want to share yes, with us. Thank you. Yes, good morning, church. It's such a blessing to be able to, to get and be there at your homes, be there. You can be with us. We are connected in one spirit, even though that we are in different locations, but we are in one spirit. Getting together to praise and worship our Lord. Amen. And I'm just going to read a scripture from Psalms 27, the last uh, verse. And it says, Yet I am confident I will see the Lord goodness while, while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courage. Yes, wait patiently in the Lord. We all know that we're living difficult times, isn't yes, it? we are. But thanks God, little by little, we're getting out of all this. Now we can move around Victoria freely and mm -hmm. that's good. And very, very soon, we will be here together. Amen. Well, and we're all looking forward to that. Yes. Well, stay tuned, stay with us. We're going to join our worship team and we're going to praise and worship the Lord this morning and we'll see you shortly for some announcements. Amen.
Well, our worship team is always are doing a great job. It's wonderful to praise and worship and just see the Amen. way the Lord is using them. And thank you so much to our worship team for their faithfulness. Well, we're going straight into the announcements. Well, firstly, please stay tuned. As you know, the Victorian Government has, has removed some of the restrictions. Stay tuned. There will be more information, particularly shortly we'll be opening up to having small groups midweek here at the, at the church building and then not too much longer we might be get, able to get together on a Sunday morning. So please stay tuned for that. Yes, thank you, Pastor Christina. Yes, we are probably, very, we're really excited, really excited to be able little by little to start seeing what's going to happen. So stay tuned mm -hmm. and continue with the announcements. Um, uh, as you all know, we as a church, again this year, we are actually buying 60 presents for children in foster care. So I'm um, just pray, we pray that right now God will touch your hearts so we can bless those children. Mm -hmm. uh, through this present is incredible. It's just a little a small present that we get to them, but also we write a card in behalf of the church. And normally that card only says that Jesus loved them. And this is the message that we're going to transmit to those children. So please, I encourage every one of you to open up your heart and help us while we co collect the money so we can buy these presents. And when you make the, dep uh, the deposit of your offering, please just put in there uh, foster care so it's easy for us to identify the, the offering. Also, as we do every week, we come together here as a church because of the offerings and tithes yes. of the church. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. Because not only we are able to do all the changes that need to happen in the church, but also because we are here to serve the Lord. We serve with our heart, with our life, but also with our offerings and our tithes, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Thank you, Cecilia. Also, as you know, Christmas is coming up. It's just snuck up on us like it does every year. And it's right at the doorstep. And so we've got some special things that organise, a couple of surprises for the church, for the kids as well too. So stay tuned for that. We've got something to look forward to here at Jesus is the Way. Well, now we're going to go back to our worship team as Amen. they lead us in some yes. praise and worship before we return to the Word. God bless you. We'll see you soon. God bless you, church. <laughs> Fill the law and 
till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death, and the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored, and the church of Christ was Church, this morning we're continuing on with the uh, study. Um, this message is, will the real Jesus please stand up? And I'm taking my text from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. And the phrase that I wanna focus on this morning is, but who do you say I am? But who do you say that I am? Last week, we introduced the topic of the real Jesus. And I wanna focus on that today, the real Jesus, with uh, an old television program that I remember as a kid. It was called To Tell The Truth. Different people purporting to be the same person. And when the time came, only the real person could stand up and declare that they were that person that they were inquiring about. Now, why do, I, why do I wanna focus on the real Jesus? Because opinions vary about the historical Jesus and, the, and there are so many opinions that vary about the uh, divine Jesus. Was He really God? Did it make sense what He said? Was it really true what He did? So I wanna talk a little bit about that. And given that, given that our main source of, of uh, the life of Jesus comes from the Scriptures, that is the Bible, I think we need to go back to see what the Bible says and what about Jesus, what He said and what He did. So I wanna go to John chapter, sorry, Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. And this is what it says. When Jesus came to the reason of Caesarea Philippi, He asked the disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah and one of the other or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being, but now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you uh, permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. We'll just stop there for a moment. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And the question Jesus asked the disciples as they were gathered together, because Jesus wanted some feedback, not necessarily because He had a problem with His own self-image, but He wanted to hear from them what was going on. He knew what was going on, but He wanted to hear from them. And the response was, had, was varied. Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others say Jeremiah or even one of the prophets. They could only think of Jesus 
as a prophet, not divine. In some cases, there were, there were superstitious thoughts about reincarnations of some of the Old Testament prophets. This was strange even for uh, many of the Jewish people, but th th these tendencies of reincarnation actually were uh, going through some of their beliefs. The general population could not accept Him, that is Jesus, as the Son of God. This was something very difficult for them to swallow, you, you know, to be, to declare God incarnate, to declare actually God with feet on earth. Yes, they believed that He was a good man, but just a man with ideological intentions. You know, a good man who wanted to make a difference, a good man who wanted to challenge the status quo, a good man to bring reform to a dead religion, someone who could be a leader, but someone who wasn't God. So many of them believed that He was someone good, but not God. But He asked the question to His disciples, what do you say that I am? What do you say that I am? And I think this is an important question for all of our viewers, all those that are actually listening to this Word again, because we're going back to the, to the original uh, um, title of the message, will the real Jesus please stand up? And who do you say that I am? Jesus said after hearing from others where, uh, that were saying and uh, what they were saying about Him, about Jesus, He then posed the same question to those who were close to Him, those of the inner circle, those that were with Him for, for the last three years, those who really knew Jesus well. And Jesus posed this question, who do you say that I am? Was He, was he saying this because He was insecure? Did He have low self-esteem? Did he need some validation from those around him? Was he worried about what his disciples really thought of him? But Peter's answer was something that I believe, speaking on behalf of all the others, was something that he wanted to hear from their mouths. Peter said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One sent by God. The Anointed One in, Jewish, in the Jewish mindset is linked with King David from his lineage because King David was, was considered someone who, would, who set people free, who gave Israel the amazing uh, uh, advancement as a kingdom. And to be a Messiah was someone from that lineage who would set his people free, who would also bring a great uh, advancement with the kingdom of Israel who would be the light of hope for the people of Israel, a kingly figure who would triumph in the last days over Israel's enemies, the Son of the living God. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, not a mythical figure to, or hero that lived in the past, but the Son of God who would continue to live and is, is alive, dare I say, but the reality is, the Son of Man, the Son of God, who is alive even today. Now, seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding, praying and representing all those who are covered with His blood, all those that believe by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. How did Peter, who spoke on behalf of the disciples, come to such a conclusion? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In verse 17, it says, this is what Jesus replied. My Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. This was a spiritual awakening for Peter. And I believe also for the disciples, a revelation, not based on natural surroundings. Because these disciples, particularly Peter, who was their spokesperson for them in this case, he had an encounter with Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. He exercised faith in Jesus and believed. And as I mentioned last week, people's opinions vary about Jesus. But Peter was very decisive and very clear, speaking what he believed in his heart and in his mind about Jesus. But today when the name Jesus comes up, that people, many people have different ideas of what this Jesus is all about. 
And I believe God is asking the question to us, to you, but who do you say that I am? What do we say about Jesus? What do we believe about this Jesus? Is He the Son of God or is He a mythical figure from the past? There's no point in painting a picture of Jesus that fits what we have created in our own minds because as it clashes with the Jesus of the Bible, we need to see the real Jesus. And if we read about Him in the Scriptures, we need to come to the point of receiving a revelation, not just reading about it, but also understanding and connecting in faith with Him, Give, uh, receiving spiritual insight based on His Word. We can read about Jesus and approach the written record purely from an academic or critical viewpoint, you know, just like we would with any other classical literature. It's the same as uh, we approach the writings of Shakespeare or we, we approach different, uh, uh, different references of uh, history. Some people think then that the same approach needs to take, uh, the same thing needs to happen with the, the approach of the, the, the written Word of God. But a spiritual revelation needs to happen here. A spiritual revelation will give us the perspective of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. You know, it talks about Jesus talks about a revelation here. The revelation that built the church, the foundation of the church. The church was not founded on a historical figure. Once again, I wanna make this point. It was founded on the Son of the living God. For this reason, the church has endured centuries of challenges and centuries of all sorts of things that have come against the church, but it still survived and it's surviving even today. There have been many popular figures throughout history that have established movements. They have come and they have gone. But the church has not been established on a movement or a personality. I want to make this very clear. The church has not been established on a movement or a personality. It has been established by Jesus, the Son of the living God. We need to have this perspective in our minds when we approach who Jesus is, when we want to have a clear understanding of who this Jesus is through the power of His resurrected body the giving of the Holy Spirit and the mandating of His followers. Not a man-made institution. The church is not a man-made institution. Jesus referred to it as His body, the body of Christ, the church that we belong to. No matter what the world or the devil throws at it, not only will it survive, that is the church, but it will flourish. It has a divine authority. It is not something instituted or made by man. It is, it's been instituted and created from the heart of God, the church. It will survive, it does survive and it will flourish. Painting the right picture of Jesus is very important. With this in mind, that Jesus is the Son of the living God, and also the head of the church, we can't paint our own picture of Him. We simply can't try to create a Jesus of our imagination. We need to understand the truth, His truth, His claims, His purpose. That's why when I hear people say, the Jesus I believe in is like this, like this, like this. And it's a different Jesus than that of His claims, what Jesus claimed. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that many people have created an image of this Jesus, which is very different than what Jesus claimed to be, what He actually did, what the Bible teaches us about Him. And it's in, in many ways, it's a misrepresentation of Almighty God. And this is something very, very dangerous because if in our minds we have a, a different understanding of God, then how can we approach Him? How can we, have, how can we relate to Him? How can we receive the benefits of Almighty, from Almighty God and the, 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 salvation, the salvation issue? We need to understand that we have to have a clear picture and a clear comprehension of the real Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible. That's why I've said, will the real Jesus please stand up? The real Jesus is very different than the, than the Jesus that the world actually portrays. 
That's why it's so important for us to go back to the source of Jesus. And it's a different Jesus than that of those that claim that He is the way that they think He is. You know, this disturbs me when I hear people say that Jesus I believe is like this because it misrepresents our Lord and Saviour. This is a speech that does not come from the revelation of God. Thus the Jesus of convenience, hear me out, the Jesus of convenience has been created. The Jesus of convenience. In other words, the Jesus of, of convenience will allow me to do the things that I want to do. The Jesus of convenience will help me with my troubled mind because I want to have a picture of this Jesus that will give me permission for dysfunction, for a dysfunctional lifestyle or even the things that are not right and not good, then the Jesus I've created will give me permission to live that way, do the things that can harm others as well, which is sad. How does one receive, just as Peter received this revelation, how does one receive a revelation from God? We have the written revelation, obviously. What God wanted us to know about Jesus and His purpose is already known. And you've may, you may have followed me on another occasion about the content of the Bible, the content of the Word of God. You know, there are a lot of speculations on different things, different spiritual things. And we, we tend, sometimes we tend to follow a, a, a thought because it sounds interesting. But I wanna make this point very clear very clear to the, today that the written Word of God is exactly what God wants us to know. There's no point in speculating on stuff if it's not written in the Word of God. The revelation that we have of Jesus Christ is enough for us to exercise faith in Him. We don't need extra stuff. I know that there are commentaries and there are books and things that are written, but usually they, what they do is they actually help us to understand. They, 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 they open up the Word. They don't add to the Word. So how do we receive a revelation from God? We have the written revelation that God wanted us to know about Jesus and His purpose, which already we know, we already we have. And we need to consider that and consider what Jesus has said, consider what He has done. Then there is this spiritual connection with Jesus, which is very, very important. It is possible to have, listen to me carefully, church. Listen carefully, friends. It is possible to have a conversation with Jesus. Jesus is not just our Lord, not just our Saviour. He is our friend. He wants to connect with us through faith, in faith. It's possible to have a conversation with Jesus, to sit quietly and talk with Him and allow His Spirit to convey to us, to calm our fears, to open our minds and to help us to understand certain things through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we ask the Holy Spirit to minister to us about these discoveries that we found in His Word. Now, the question isn't what others say about Jesus, question is, but what do you say about Him? As Jesus poses this question to His disciples, I understand what everybody else is saying about me, but you as followers, you as prospective followers, what do you say about me? Jesus is saying, is it He or is it not? Is He or is He not the Christ, the Son of the living God? Is He or is He not the Christ, the Son of the living God? And the only way you can answer that is to open your heart and ask the Holy Spirit to minister to you and allow that His written revelation comes alive in your spirit. Allow me to pray right now. And as the real Jesus is standing up, will you allow Him to come into your life? Jesus. Father, I, I want to, once again, I want to thank You for Jesus. Oh, Jesus, thank You for coming and saving my soul, the salvation of my soul. 
Lord, as I, I look into Your Word and I read the way You lived Your life on this earth, the promises You gave, the conquest over sin and death, rising from the dead, and Lord, going to prepare a place for us. I can see not only a Lord, not only a Saviour, but I can also see a friend. And I pray, Lord God, that we will always, as we unfold Your Word, we would always acknowledge You as the Christ, the Son of the living God. Not just a good man, not just a prophet, but the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. God bless you. Tune in again next week as we go and continue on with this theme. Will the real Jesus please stand up? Amen.